So I keep saying in all our videos that CMA has become one of the most popular programs that finance and accounting professionals are seeking, and more importantly, companies in India specifically are hiring. Somehow in the last few years. So in this video, we're going to talk about the details of CMA US. So today we're doing a little bit something a little different, right? I have one of our students, one of our full-time, I would say. Team members who've been with us for how long now itself? Oh, uh, three years. Three years, and he just appeared for his CMA Part Two. I'll cover that in a bit. Uh, recently, and he's cleared it, and you're appearing for Part One uh, in when? September. In September, so you'll not only have me to give you the details from a counselling standpoint, from a roadmap standpoint, but you'll have somebody who's worked and actually given the CMA exams himself and cleared it. So hopefully, more and more questions can be answered. Before I jump into it, if this is the first time you visit this channel, then please do click click subscribe. We make a lot of videos like this to help you make finance and accounting decisions for your career. So uh, I've graduated in BCom Accounting and Finance. After that, I jumped into sell into a product role where uh, essentially my job is to ensure that students such as you pass the various courses for which we train. I appeared for my CMA in the month of February, which I cleared in my first attempt with a score of four hundred out of five hundred. I studied completely using the Zell lectures. Uh, sometimes on the weekends I'd attend live other lectures. You know, if I had my full time commitments, I'd watch the recordings, and uh, that made it very convenient for me. So CMA, what what really is management accounting? So CMA, Certified Management Accounting. It's a U.S. based qualification with a headquarters base out of U.S. But they also have offices in India, very close to the CMA body as well. And it's and because of its powers of being applicable for any industry. It's a globally accepted qualification. Now, uh, again, something which I usually land up saying, right? How do you understand what a CMA does? So, take your favorite company, right? Let's take Google, and let's say you want to enter into the ground floor of Google from the finance department, but your aim is to eventually rise up to the top, maybe even become a potential CFO. So, if you enter the ground level, your job as a management accountant is to collate finance and accounting data. So you look at the number of search volume, the number of search impressions, and the revenue that Google creates from search from different regions of the world. You talk about how much money is Gmail making. You talk about YouTube, which is under Google, and you understand what's the not only the cost and the revenue, but other metrics which are important. You collect information about Google Drive, about Google Maps, etc., etc., and you use your CMA knowledge to turn it into something that can make sense, which you present to seniors. If they can use what you've done. And actually increase revenue for Google or reduce cost for Google. Advance the organization. That's how you add value to the company, and that's how you start sort of rising through the ranks. So that's more or less what CMA does. It's very detailed when it comes to different industries, but this is how you actually understand the relevance of CMA. So, guys, as Pratham mentioned, the US CMA will actually prepare you for the more practical aspects of finance. The way they explain concept and the way the exam actually happens is a very very enjoyable experience personally uh, because you can relate everything that you've learned to the practical world, which made it a very enjoyable experience for me. Got it. Now coming to you guys, right? So first of all, uh, in our usual format, what the eligibility for CMA. Simply put, as long as you've given grade twelve, you are eligible to appear for the exams. It takes on an average, as I'll again explain in a while. Approximately anywhere between six months to a year to complete CMA, you need two years of work experience and you need to complete your graduation to earn the CMA membership. So currently, if you are in college, our suggestion is give the exams if this is what you want to do. And as soon as you're done with the exams, search for some form of work experience, and hopefully by the time you graduate, you'll be able to earn the membership. If you're already a graduate, then none of this matters. You appear for the exam, work, and earn your membership. Coming to the academic structure, so. The CMA uh, exam is split into two parts: part one, which covers a lot of details on accounting, and part two, which covers a lot of details in finance. So, uh, guys, in part one, we cover a lot of concepts related to costing, where you will be learning various concepts that are very practical in the real world, such as variance analysis, where what you actually budget versus what actually happens, whether they're matching, whether you outperform yourself, whether you underperform. These sort of concepts you can expect to learn in part one. Whereas in part two, it's more finance related, right? So one of my favorite subjects was corporate finance, where you essentially learn three things: how do you raise money, how do you manage money, and how do you grow money. And this is relevant across every single industry that you can think of. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, it's a good to hear um, somebody who just recently gave the exam and his perspective. But yeah, more or less, these are the subjects that you cover in CMA. Aim at the very least to complete both the parts in a year. Uh, try and not go beyond. You can, but that's at least what Zell generally recommends. So guys, I'll cover this very simply. Uh, the paper pattern is a hundred MCQs and then you have two essay based questions wherein you have to analyze a certain situation and then give your thoughts on it. It's as simple as that. You do not have to write very long answers and all of that is irrelevant and sort of in the Yeah, box. and these exams, they land up not really giving you marks for lengthy answers. They don't, they don't. So you need to stick to the point and you know, you actually get more marks for sticking to the point. The second bit that Pratham asked is uh, as to how long the duration is. So I'll talk about the training. You can complete your training in approximately one and a half to two months. You can go quicker if you want to rely on recordings and watch them at a faster pace and complete it that way. Post that, you need approximately 25 to 30 days to do your own practice, which will mainly, uh, you know, involve solving questions, reading through the theory, so on and so forth. So comfortably, you can get one part done in three months. So that means you can complete the entire course in a duration of six months. The exams happen three times a year. From the 1st of Jan to the 28th of Feb, you get to choose your slot. Similarly, May, June is the second attempt that happens in the year and September and October is the final attempt that happens in a year. And what about the passing marks? Sure. So, uh, guys, so the CMA exam uh, doesn't have marks per question. They put your score on a scale to ensure fair grading. We'll not get into this. I think we've made a separate video on this. But essentially, you need 360 on a scale of 500 to pass. Yeah. And all of this is computer-based. All of this is computer-based, guys. Completely MCQ-based. It's a very convenient exam to write. The experience has pro metric as well. Yeah, and I think it's all across India. It's all across India, the metropolitan cities in India. And uh, yeah, we can, at Zell, we can help you figure that out. All right. So this is more or less the academic structure. Now, another question that most people want to know is the opportunities they get in India and overseas. Okay, again, if you can first chime in, then sure. I'll add. The IMA body itself is tied up with companies like Amazon, Apple, Accenture, where they help place students at entry-level positions. Uh, you know, institutes such as Zell are also partnered with a lot of... Yeah, initially, like our placement head. Uh, yeah. So recently, KPMG was looking for specifically CMAs for two or three yes. of the different departments. So yeah. And uh, guys, decisions these days are, you know, completely based around data. So I think all... Uh, all, all, uh, in all companies across all industries do need management accountants who bring this uh, knowledge of uh, you know how do you budget, how do you plan, how do you create these performers, and I, I think it's really powerful, especially in today's landscape. Yes. Also, uh, one thing I find very interesting, guys, is the fact that uh, the CMA body, that is the IMA, they do a market research every single year where they go to organizations and ask them, okay, what are skills that you want in management accountants? And this is probably one of the reasons it is so, uh, you know, prevalent in today's market and why they have sustained yeah. success over so many years. Yeah. Now coming to the fee structure. So more or less CMA, you can complete anywhere between one and a half to 1.8 lakhs for in Indian terms. And this covers everything. There is the training fees. There is the body fees, which includes registration, exam fees. The body fees further is split into students and professionals, etc, etc. But I think again, yes. you take over this point. Yes. So guys, there's three main components that you will be paying when you register for the CMA course. The first is the registration fee as Pratham mentioned, and then you pay the exam fee as and how you want to appear for this exam. So this outflow is not going to happen all at once. The second component that you will pay is the Zell training fee. Uh, now, depending on the variance which, with which you proceed, the prices can differ. But like Pratham mentioned, you can comfortably get this course done within uh, one and a half to two lakhs. The third thing guys and the most interesting split is that IMA has different pricing depending on your profile. So you can either categorize and register yourself as a student, which means if you're pursuing a full-time undergrad or a post-grad program, so it could be a BCom, BAF, MCom, MBA, something of the sort, you fall under the student category where the pricing is slightly reduced for you. However, if you're not pursuing a full-time program and would still like to pursue the course, you fall in the professional category. Right. And remember guys that for most of us, right, I'm suggesting if you're a student, you can study and then start working. But if you're already working, you're basically earning while you're learning. So the cost further reduces. And most importantly, even if you invest this much, the first job that you get, hopefully within the first six to eight months of that job, you'll more than recover your entire investment. So none of it is at once. You can recover it almost more or less immediately. And you have a global qualification in your pocket. 
sure so uh, guys the ima wants to support students such as yourselves and uh, you know we also work with a lot of colleges and we know how enthusiastic colleges and universities are about you know their students pursuing these professional qualifications so essentially if your college is willing to endorse you or your university is willing to endorse you you can get a scholarship with the ima wherein your registration fees and your exam fees are completely waived off we at zell can definitely help you procure this scholarship through your college or your university So guys I think that as uh, so we are what they call an affiliated learning partner with the IMA body so the reason that he knows all of these details we know all of the details inside out is not only because he's given the exam or that we train candidates but our affiliation with the body gives us a much deeper insight into what the IMA body is doing for indian students so the connection between whether you should pursue it is it the right course for you i think if if you let us know your your expectations your details we can like draw a detailed road map for you guys hopefully like rushil you all are also going to be able to give the exams clear it in the first attempt and have a good launch pad for your entire career so i guess that this is it up uh, if there's anything else that you think we've missed uh, let us know in the comments and we'll see you in the next video Thank you.